Benjamin Weaver, the linebacker, to be a senior, uh, and Cameron Bynum, who's a, uh, a junior corner. Both those guys are great ambassadors, great football players, and encourage you to get to know them. So, with that, as the year is going, starting next Friday, looking forward to a great season. Open it up. All right. Patrick did a great job for us the last couple of years and on the field and off the field as well, setting a tone and being a great leader. And, um, that room, uh, we developed some more depth. We're encouraged about the group as a whole. Yeah. A bit of uh, as you mentioned. But if you look at spring, last year and at the end of the year, for the spring football, Chris Brown, a true freshman last season, did some really, really good things. Uh, he was very noticeable in the spring. Powerful guy, good runner. And then the, the rest of that group, you know, there's certain guys, Marcel Fancy, the third, uh, Sean Collins, Carlos Brooks, who's coming in. We can do certain things, so I think there might be some of the committee going there. That's what's all about to find out. Coach, you've been around Peter Sermon forever and his family forever. How weird is that having Peter's son? Line, linebacker against you guys this year. Uh, You've known Jackson for a long time. Yeah, so uh, it's you know it's college football and it's uh, pretty neat. You know, but on game day, you know, you're so invested in the team and your players, you just do everything in your power to help your team win. So you've been part of different relationships with coaching relationships or schools and. Compete against just part of our profession. You don't have one of your coaches, it's his kid. Yeah. Does he know the weaknesses? Oh, yeah, I'm not really, you know, we're not concerned with the, the knowledge. I'm sure they don't have yeah, that. Yeah, they don't know what they can talk about. It's a detailed game plan. That would be a question for them. Justin, what aspect of the team do you think is the most important? Well, it's uh, a great question. That's what practice is for. Uh, we had some, some units and some groups that played well in stretches. Uh, you know, we looked at defensively. There was time during the season that played pretty dang good, but there was some consistency issues. Uh, so those are the things that we were talking about. And fall, yeah. Offensively, uh, we got to prepare for that there. We also had a staff to generate some explosive plays. So we're really looking for that ball. Everybody's walking at a line, throwing a quarterback, quarterback and running out of the receiver. Everybody involved with that. So, you know, I don't know if there's one group, but I, you know, I expect everybody to do That's what we need to do. Now. Coach, what's one guy that surprised you so far um, in practice and then we'll lead up to, um, to excuse me, uh, to fall camp? Well, we just spring practice. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned Chris Brown and Cam Good, who's coming off injury. Played really well for us two years ago. Last year got injured in the first game. Did some nice things in spring. Got some of those, you know, Will Craig at left tackle, the young receivers, Nico Emilio. Road Young, we've got some transfers in the summer, we have receiver, that we need uh, to help us. There's a number of guys. What are some of the things you're looking for the most clarity in coming into camp? What do you mean by that? Unanswered questions that you're kind of interested in seeing yeah. an answer to? Well, I think uh, if you look at it you know, by position groups, it's depth at offensive line. We're going to be the rotational guys there. How's the tight end position going to shake out? Who can do what? We have some talented guys in there. We just got to have to play much. Uh, the receiver room is obvious in terms of there's inexperience. We've got some athleticism. How's that going to look and develop? And it won't be settled by game one. I mean, we got to continue to improve in all those areas, but I think it's going to be something that starts to get sorted out during fall camp. Obviously, the quarterback situation. Running back group. I mean, I think anywhere you don't have, you know, like on the defense, like the 
secondary. Those guys have played a lot of football together. They're all returning, so it's a little cleaner right now. Uh, but a lot of those guys have a well linebacker in the spot. It's going to happen there. Rotational guys in deep line. So. But that's the fun part. I mean, that's what you know, the guys have been working extremely hard this summer. And they're they're uh, prepped and ready for fall, fall camp. That's the fun part of this, is the way it shakes out. Coach, I, I wanted to ask, uh, uh, what's your assessment of Kwoni Dang since he's come in? Uh, Kwoni Dang? Coin? Yeah. Coin Dang. But what about him? Now, what's the uh, what's your assessment of him since he's come in? And, Coins, uh, yeah, he's what? a very uh, talented guy. He's got great leg rules. He's 6'5", 6'6", athletic. He, uh, he's very, very eager to learn. And so, so that's what we've noticed in the spring. When you approach meetings and practice, it's very mature. And I'm really excited about his development. The guys in Last Chance you tend to get on the camera because they've got some issues going on. Is it kind of nice to see him behind the scenes in that show? Just doing his business? Would you tell me, is that what he was doing? He seems to just be handling his business. Yeah, he's a very mature guy, as I mentioned. And, uh, I don't know the storyline of that, that show, I don't watch it, but he's, he's driven, he's mature, he's still what are the reports about his transition to the inside? Well, we had him in spring, and he actually had a little bit in the bowl practice. But he uh, he's done a really nice job. You know, now, traditionally, you know, a guy that tall, it doesn't you know, seem natural sometimes. But he, he plays very natural in there. He's got instincts, he's got long levers. Um, and in the run game, he's just got you know, a tackling radius and bigger. Um, and in the pass game, just the windows, you know, if you talk to the safeties, they notice it because when they throw seam routes, they got to throw it over the top of his hand, the quarterback just so it puts more air on the ball. Or if it's choice routes and underneath stuff to the tight ends and backs, you know, he's going to take the ball away. But, you know, it's all, he's got potential, which is great, but he still has a, a long way to go. He's been learning how to, you got to go out on the floor. He's just, just still uh, working for Yeah. Coach, it feels like you recruited the entire state of Arizona to come out to, uh, to Berkeley. I was just wondering, have you seen anything from any of those guys, maybe anybody that came out earlier, or people who dominated down there like Brett Johnson that has kind of stood out to you so far? Um, well, they, they all just got there, you know, so they've been in with our strength and conditioning group, and we'll get a chance to go hands-on with them on a week of Friday. Really, you know, talented group of guys. They're young and haven't played a lot of football. How have you guys been able to pull that off? Pulling from you know, kids who are about a thousand miles. It's all about the fit, you know, and looking for guys who are going to fit into Cal academically, socially. Obviously, they have the talent to help us win. And we have the primary recruiting on this Charlie Ragel, who's a high school very young forever. He's got a lot of great relationships in terms of getting information. But you talked about big, big breakaway plays on offense. Um, what do you think, just in general, um, last season wasn't too good on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, what are you prioritizing to improve, like you know, red zone efficiency, um, passing game? What are you doing? Yeah, I think the big things for us on offense. Obvious ones are protecting the football. Yeah. At its core, when you have the ball, you got to keep it. When you don't have it, you get it back. We gave the ball up too much last year, uh, way too much. And so that goes, there's a lot to that. Uh, it's one position. Uh, the other thing that we have to get better at is creating some explosive plays. To think you're going to drive the ball at three, four, five yards play, you know, the whole field, the whole game, it's very, very difficult. Uh, primary indicators and scoring points is pretty expensive plays. And we were not good in that area last year, so it's coaching, it's development of our players, it's uh, recruiting, going out and performing. You, know, you want to scheme things to get guys wide open and create you know, big plays, but the other teams are well coached too, so sometimes you got to make somebody mess. 
you got to fight somebody, you got to throw over their head, you got to break the tackle. So it's, it's everyone involved, the coaching, it's playing, it's all that. So that's what you got to do. On that, do you feel any any additional pressure since it's your third season to, to make a stamp or any more pressure um, to, to I don't know, the yeah. team overall? So Return to a bowl game. coaching college football, there's pressure. I mean, it's, you know, that's how we operate. So we're, we're trying to be very good again to win every game. So that pressure comes from the and lastly, uh, any word on Brandon Nicolain and his decision uh, to remain with the team or uh, for Brandon has chose to focus on baseball. Right. So we wish him the best. Thank you. What have you seen out of that trip on the year early going here? And just been with him on the team right now. He's we'll settled in. Uh, there'll be a transition from um, the count. He's seen on the team. Uh, there's a transition from uh, this level. Justin Herbert story. Uh, take that however you wish, good, bad, or otherwise. Oh, a lot of time growing uh, up. Justin Herbert, yeah. 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 Personal relationship, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, Justin Herbert's an extremely talented player, uh, great person, and uh, you know, for us, faces, uh, you know, faces one of the best in college football. Last year, you were able to break through Cal's 14-game losing streak to USC. I'm sure that was special to you, uh, having coached at USC. What new challenges are being presented this year with them switching to that new air raid offense? Well, there's all the offenses create challenges, just different ways. Uh, I know they're going to have great players. They'll be well coached. And they'll be just like the other teams in our conference. You look at the top to bottom in our conference, the quality of the players and coaching is extraordinary. And uh, I know SC will be loaded, I know they'll be well coached. And we we kind of do our work on us, you know, and I'm sure their their version of the, the air raid or their quality will be different. You know, they'll have wrinkles, everybody's got different wrinkles, and the coaching teams are the same. And, uh, so we know it'll be a Challenge. Coach, I have to ask you about uh, Washington away in Week 10. Um, is that kind of circled on your calendar? Or I'm sure you're not preparing any different. You can probably, I bet you can answer this question. <laughs> probably could. <kind of. laughs> uh, again, I mean, the schedule, they don't ask me when do you want to play which team. They don't. They send you the schedule. Like, here's, here's who you're playing, when you're playing. So that's how I would it. Um, Before we get to UC Davis, we have our own, we have to work on ourselves. So, you know, we'll start working on UC Davis from that time to come. So we want Washington to be two. You know, they're you know, uh, That'll be a challenge. We don't even know. Uh, the thing about the schedule, but, you know, what are practices going to look like leading up to the first game? And, uh, what we do we do? Uh, in terms of schematics, we do all that in the spring, fall camp, summer, fall camp. So we're, we're introducing things that we might use week two or five or seven. We don't create a new offense or defense on Tuesday of that week. I do that. So, in terms of the schedule and when we play, which team, I don't have to for that. If they ask me to fill it out, I might fill it out a certain way. If they don't, so I've got a lot of mental capital. We need to be able to run the ball, to throw the ball. We run RPO 
So it's important to have a productive back or backs in order to make your offense go. We spent time talking about creating explosive plays and uh, moving the ball down the field to score points. And so that's why I think we need to of how that relates to the NFL and why they get contracts and all those kinds of things. That's sort of a defensive-oriented coach going into any given game in the Pac-12. Is stopping the run is often kind of like the first year? Yeah, the teams run the ball efficiently. And on you, it's going to be a long day. So I think that's part of your structure on being this power you build. It's not like you line up on the first play of your game or play two-man all day and say we're not going to you know, try and fit the run. And in fact, you have an answer to fit the run game, or else we're going to run that throw. Uh, so that's one thing we talk about every week. What are we going to do? What are our numbers look like in order to stop the run? How do you create some negative plays to create them and put them in longer down the distance? Absolutely. Evan talked about losing body fat. As good as he was last year, how much better do you think that can make him this year? Oh, I think it's just one of the things. You know, when you get to his age, you know, the, he's learned more and more about playing linebacker, and now it's okay physically. What can he do to be better? And then mentally, what can he do to be better? So one of the things that we challenged him with, and he challenged himself, was kind of getting leaner. He's still a big guy. In the so that'll just help with his flexibility and his change of direction. He laughed about being a linebacker wearing number 89. Do you guys give him a hard time about that ever? No. As long as he tackles people, he can get out of here with a <laughs> No, it's great.